Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. This week we bring in Andrew Brown from Splitly. Hey, hey Andrew, how you doing? How you doing? Very good, very good. Excellent. Okay guys, before we start, remember to like, subscribe or leave a comment under the video and of course press the bell if you want to pick up on the notifications. So today we're going to speak about uh, split testing, but first Andrew, do you want to look, give us a little bit of background on yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm a co-founder of Splitly, uh, which is a software to help you do split testing. And um, I was, um, well, I still am an Amazon seller, and that's kind of how I got into this and came up with the idea for for, for the software. Um, I, but I've been a developer for many years before that, and it was just when I saw, um, I saw this a lot, the, the opportunity on Amazon, and, and my friends were starting to get into it, so I thought I, I'd give it a go as well. Excellent. So let's jump straight into it, guys. So... Andrew, in your, opinion, in your opinion, I know it's slightly different on Amazon, we'll cover that later, but what is split testing? So um, the place that people will be most familiar with this is if they have a website and they might have thought, oh, I want to, I want to improve my website and I'm not sure, I'm not confident in the decisions I'm making. So you can essentially, you can set it up so that half of your website traffic will go to one version of, let's say, your a web page you're trying to test, and the other half of the traffic will go to another version. So, and it's split constantly back and forth. So, the first person that comes to your website sees a green button on the checkout page. The next person that comes sees a red button, and the next person sees a green button back and forth like that. And um, the reason why you do it that way is that if you have enough data points, which is um, um, did the person click the button or not each time they came to it? If you gather up all that data, you can analyze it and you can say with confidence which version was actually better. Yeah. Rather than just rather than just what you know, if you weren't spit testing, you just change the button and you'd say, Hey, I got more sales this month. I must have been because I changed that button. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a, a more data driven, methodical way of, of doing that. Yeah. So basically what you're saying is that let's just say you get a thousand visits to your website a day. If this is set up, you're sending uh, 500 visits to one page with the change in the button mm. and then 500 mm. visits to another page. Or if you're using software, it doesn't actually necessarily change the page. It's just changing the colors of the button on the back end mm. because you're able to yeah. use a snippet of code to put into the website. Obviously, that's slightly different yeah. with Amazon. We we don't have the same attributes, so we have to do it differently, don't we, in terms of we have a 24-hour period that we rotate instead of session on session. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So with a website, you can use um, software like uh, Google's or Visual Web Optimizer or one of these things, and uh, they will rotate the thing back and back per session. That's the ideal situation because, as I said, it's not if you just sent 500 sessions to one version, and then 500 to the other, but in a row sequentially, then you're, you're just saying you haven't actually done a spit test and, and there's too much luck involved. It's kind of a, it's an, a thing that you have to wrap around your head intuitively that if you repeat an event enough times, then the luck will even out and you'll be able to see um, you know, which, first, uh, which way it's biased, for example. Like in a coin flip example I always give, if you flip it a hundred times, you're going to be able to see if it's weighted one way or the other. But if you just flip it once, then you don't have much. You don't have enough data to be able to determine that. Yeah. So, yeah. But so, as, you, as your point was about Amazon being different, yeah. Essentially, we can't stick Visual Web Optimizer onto Amazon. Although Amazon itself is doing spit tests all the time, and you you might have probably noticed this if you ever just go to Amazon.com and say, "Hey, wait, they've they've arranged things a little bit different here," yeah. and you go back to it, "Hey, it's back to the old way again. What's going on here?" Yeah. And um, so. Amazon's constantly doing this, um, but what we want to do is we want to test our product listings themselves in a similar fashion. And the method that uh, we've come up with is essentially to just change the listings inside our central back and forth, yeah. and to try and get it as close to a real spit, spit test as much as possible. So you just rotate the make the change back and forth and back and forth like this. Yeah. And the reason why we do it on 24-hour time basis, as you said, is because we, that's when the, the, Amazon gives us that data for the sessions and the uh, PPC and, and page views, stuff like that, is given on a 24-hour time slot. Yeah. So we, we, we want to mimic that so that we can match the data up with the change that, that's happening. Excellent. And so let's get to the whys. Why should we split test? Uh, so... Where people are generally making changes to their product 
um, if, especially if it's like a, a you know um, if you only have a few products and you're and you're drilling down on those ones, not like those the guys that are, have you know ten thousand SKUs, they're prop they just throw stuff up and walk away, right? But I think most of us in like the FBA game, private label stuff like that, uh, we're trying to really get you know make the best images and the best copy and everything to get that edge because we're usually in kind of competitive areas, right? We're trying to beat out the competition, so. If you could just, if you could reliably increase your conversion rate by a few percent, um, and you're in a competitive niche, no, so what's going to happen there is you're going to get get a quite a significant return on that, and also, of course, Amazon's going to like it because you're making more sales and you're going to move up the, the research rank and all that sort of stuff. So if you can do that, and um, obviously we know one way we can do that is to spend more on advertising, PPC, for example, turn on the faucet, that, that sort of thing. But if you can do it without spending more on advertising, I mean, that's great, right? Now the question is, most people at the moment are are thinking like that, but the changes they're making are just based on intuition. Yeah. So, okay. so yeah, so they're just making a change, and then they're saying, "Hey, did I make more sales? It yeah. must have been because of the change." I mean. well, it goes back um, to that old saying, isn't it? Is that someone says, you know, someone says to you, "How do you double your sales?" Where the other person would say, "Double your advertising." But then people hmm. forget, no, if you optimize, then you don't necessarily have to spend double amount of money. You might be able to double your conversions in some cases. Sorry, go hmm. on. Yeah, well, because we, we want to be profitable here. Doubling yeah. your advertising may, 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 just, um, may, may just not be just too expensive. You could top so, out, yeah. Um, yeah. So there's, um, yeah, if we can get any sort of gains like this without um, resorting to spending um, constant, um, constantly on advertising, then that's brilliant. So, um, yeah, so this is why you would do it. So, yeah, you're saying, okay, I have an idea of, um, I have this new image that I think could actually be formed better for my main image. Um, I'm just going to put that up there. And so what, normally what people would do is they just make the change and then they'll wait and they'll say, hey, okay, if it didn't, hey, I didn't get as much sales. What's going on? It must be because of the image I changed. But you don't know that. And there's honestly, there's the only way to know is to do a split test. That is the, actually the only way you can know. Unless the change you made was just so dramatically obvious, right? Unless there was, you know, you change your image and then your, your listing just tanks or your listing just flies off, then you, then you could be confident. But that's yeah. not what's going to happen. Cool. It's, it's going to, so it's, I mean, the, the, the test is going to help you to, to know what the winner is, but you're still going to have to come up with the actual idea for the test. So that's still going to be based mostly on, on your intuition and your, and your know-how. So you you know for example you could say hey I noticed that um, my co- my competitors are all using a similar main image to mine and um, we're all doing the same thing maybe I'll make more money if I uh, even though I don't act, even though I think this other image is not as good maybe it, maybe it actually performs better because it's different to the other guys so that could be a hypothesis that you just and you just think rummaging with that in your head okay well this is a perfect case of where you should you should split test this don't just make the change because you you. If you, as again, as I said, if you just make the change, it might not be a big difference. And so you won't be able to see what's going on, but you could actually uh, be, be hurting yourself when you don't know. So, yeah, so so your hypothesis is always going to be based on uh, just your, the, the, the general way you would think about improving your listing. Yeah. So let's go into the like the 80-20 rule now, because we know that, you know, the difference is you've got your title, you've got your main image and you've got your price. But also, you can look at things like description and the fifth bullet point. You've got to think about what is going to move the needle. So from all the tests that you've done, I know from my point of view, I found that price and image are the two main factors if I want to see the biggest movement. What have you seen? Yeah, exactly the same. And price of those two, price being the, um, the most significant yeah. um, I mean, I think that's I think that's kind of intuitive as well because if you certainly with the price case, you know that if you drop drop your price by a few dollars or increase it, you can see pretty quickly uh, yeah. the the effect on sales. Um, but of course, the price, it, you know, when you test a main image and you're testing for something like conversion rate, for example, and um, it's a very, it's it's a pure split test that that metric. But with price, now what you're testing for is which price point is more profitable. Yeah. We know what we know are, you know, we'd be very surprised if you dropped your price and your conversion rate went down or, you know, your sessions went down. That's that's unlikely to happen. But um, it's the question is, at my lower price point or at my higher price point, am I more profitable? So that's a different type of test to to a normal um, a normal A-B test. Yeah. And, and so and, the reason, and so I think it's important at this, this point to discuss 
um, that other key difference between Amazon and your Shopify store. Yeah. So what? So we. So we. You know, besides the mechanics of it, where we're limited to uh, Amazon's um, system to for uplo- uploading product listings and stuff like that, there's also Amazon's um, A9 search search rank algorithm. It's it's a bit different to Google's. So. If you if you have your Shopify store again and you um, and you make more sales, Google is completely and briskly unaware of that. It doesn't care. It's just looking at um, site engagement and content freshness and you know all these are the factors that go into there. They've got a really complicated ranking algorithm actually. Amazon's one is quite a bit simpler. Uh, you still have the keywords and things like that, but the biggest single factor on Amazon is uh, your sales velocity. If you're making money, Amazon's making money, so they so they want they will reward you for for uh, reward you in the search results for how many sales you're making. And this is everyone knows this, um, so I'm not, I'm not saying saying anything new here. But the the thing to consider is this: is this going to affect my split test? And if you're testing something mm-hmm. like your price, very much so. So um, essentially, if you have a good day of sales today. Then tomorrow, you're going to get a, a boost in the search results. So if that if that good day of sales was because you were doing an A/B price test and you test the lower price, so today was nineteen ninety nine, and then tomorrow it's now twenty four ninety nine. Oh, but hold on a second, it's got this boost in sales because of yesterday's low price. Yeah. And similarly, then when you try that the price the next day after that, it's going to be affected by. The slower uh, sales velocity from the high price, yeah. back and forth like this. So, so they're corrupting each other. Yeah. yeah. So in in theory, this if we were to break this down, we are on Amazon, and on Amazon it's about sales velocity and your conversion rate. It keeps the customers mm-hmm. happy, um, and then the algorithm is rewarding you for it. For instance, on Google, it's about organising the world's information. They're not caring right at that stage about the sales, they're caring about the relevance and the right information that's coming to you. So then if we move back to the price back on the Amazon platform, you could be sitting there all happy because you've managed to make more profits because your price was higher. But then what happens over a period of time, because your price is higher and maybe you're doing less sales, that's affecting your rankings. So eventually you can actually start to bring your rankings down, which loses visibility. So in theory, you may be better off looking at having a lower profit margin but sell more units because that's where it's going to keep you visible because you're being rewarded yeah. with your conversion and your sales velocity exactly yeah and so and um, we've looked at it Amazon uses like a, a rolling a, a rolling average so your most recent days are the most effective and so you're but then it goes drops like this so uh, it goes up to I think about 30 days Amazon's looking at all those days back there and saying, okay, how much, how many sales are you making? How many sales are you making? So you're not. So if you change your price, you're not going to know the full effect of that change until 30, late, 30 days down the line. So um, you, you, we, we need a better. You know, if you're doing an A/B price test, you need to be aware of this and factor it in, or come up with a better solution for handling repricing, which is which is what our, our which is where our software comes in. Yeah. But uh, if, if you're just focused on testing your main image, then you don't have to worry about this because you're just you're looking at your conversion rate. Now there is that same effect is actually happening with sessions. So but it's it's a it's a dampening effect and all, all it means is that if you find a winner in terms of which which one got more sessions, you can be doubly confident that that's the winner because they're actually um, there's, that, there's actually a bigger difference than than, than the test is showing, so yeah. uh, it's not such a big deal. But yeah, pricing is where many factors in. Cool. So then let's move to the next thing. Here is let's talk about patience, which is not what many people have because they've got to wait for their data. And one of my favourite words that I will not say if I was pissed, but I'll try and say it now and see if I get it right. Statistical significance. Did I say that right? You did. Spot okay. on. So it's um, okay. So essentially, it's a mathematical term mm-hmm. to um, to you know we we noticed that one version of our listing is better than the other version. The question we want to know is um, how confident can we be 
that it actually is better. And it wasn't just luck, right? Because we know Amazon, any day, from one day to the next, you can have different sales. So how can we be sure that the change that we made is actually causing um, that, that effect that we're seeing? And that's where the statistical significance comes in. It basically says, okay, you've got the X amount of data, X amount of data points, uh, data points meaning number of days you've run, and you and we have noticed that there's this big of a difference between your um, your conversion rate or your sales between the two versions. And given that information, we think that we, we the maths algorithm, thinks that you have a 85%, we're 85% confident that, yeah, this winner that, that's winning is actually the winner. Um, you can never get to 100%, of course, right? Because it, it, this is, there's always luck in there. But if you, we, we, uh, it's really, we kind of recommend if you're above 90%, that's pretty good. And if, you, if you're patient and you want to run your test longer, then the more the merrier, right? You, get, you can get a higher level of confidence. So that's good. Cool. And what about if uh, a test is going off a cliff, you know, like it's going the wrong way? Because ultimately, what we've got to remember is that when we're doing these tests, people have to realize as well is that the results are not always what you want to get at the end. Some tests fail, don't they? So what do you do if you're running a test, let's just say you're doing something on a raised price and everything's cliffing? Do you go with your gut or do you do you uh, see it out? Um, okay, so... Yeah, you, if you, if you, well, first of all, if, you, if you're running a test and one of the variants is performing really badly, you're going to reach statistical significance very quickly. Right, yep. So the test, the test is going to come, come to its conclusion anyway because it, it, that's one of the factors that it looks at when it's determining which one's the winner. Yep. So, so in that sense, if that's happening, you're going to get your answer fast so just, just to see what happens. Yep. Um, the other thing that could happen is that you're running your test and it's not reaching statistical significance. So, I mean, one of them is always going to be doing better than the other one. But if it's, not do, if it's only making us slightly better, then we don't actually know if that was the better one or not. So if when you're if that happens, um, you know, you, the simple answer there is okay. Well, then obviously that that change that I'm making hasn't had a big impact. So I, 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 in that situation, you would tend to say, okay, I'm just going to pause the test, stop the test, and test something else. It's yeah. just that simple because there's no point in, in you know you want to be making big changes and getting a good ROI. Yeah, so it's going back to those points again, price, title, uh, images, stuff that moved the needle, because doing the fifth bullet point is all well and good, but it's going to get a lot, it's going to take a longer time to get to those kind of results. Um, yeah. Let's quickly talk about some of the tests that you've seen. Obviously, you're going to have some will win, some will fail. Have you seen anything like crazy knocking it out the park or offer any advice like, for instance, you know, what, what, are you best to test? Are you best to test your like highest performing, you know, that are doing hundred units a day or do you test the stuff that's doing five units a day? What, where, where, where does the, the ground lie? Here? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an important question. And the, um, the, it's something that we keep on trying to hammer home to our customers. In fact, is uh, we keep trying to tell them this because they, there is a tendency for people to want to rescue struggling listings or, They've just launched the product, and that's when they want to, you know, figure out what works because that's the, you know, they're all it's their new thing, and that's the thing they're focused on. But that actually isn't the way you should approach it at all. So, um, spit testing is like the icing on the cake. It's 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 a way to get that extra extra cash on a successful product or a somewhat successful product at least. So, the your the, the products that you have that have a, have more traffic and are selling better are going to have more data and therefore are more easy to test. We'll, if we want to test in a product like that, we're going to get the, our answer quicker. We're going to reach statistical significance faster. So that's the first reason why it's, it's more sort of suitable. Um, but also, it's if you do a test on, 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 a, on a product that's selling well and you manage to move the needle by 5%, okay, if you have um, you know an increase of 5% in your conversion rate on a product that's doing really well, you've just made a lot of more money. But if you do that on a product that's new or... Um, yeah, it's just it's, it's struggling. Then you've spent the same amount of time, I mean, the same amount of effort has gone into doing that. But now you're you're not making your ROI is not as good. So yeah, um, yeah so there's the two main reasons why we all stress to people. But that, that's also, yeah, that, exactly. So that's the 80-20 rule part of it. But obviously, let's just say you've got a listing with 
which gets lots of sessions, then there may be a case there, well, actually, it's probably worth split testing. But if you're getting 10 or 15 sessions a day, you've got no data to work yeah, against, exactly. have you? So you won't get there. But yeah, so maybe not necessarily uh, like a newly launched listing, but maybe if you want to revive an old mm. listing that gets lots of, lots of sessions, but you're not getting any sales, then obviously, well, people are still visiting the listing. I've still got visibility. Mm where am I going wrong? Yeah. So, but I, I get what you're saying because 5% of a big seller is better than a hundred percent of something that sells two items exactly. a day. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So in, in terms of how often people should test and what they should be testing in terms of, let me rephrase that question is that I've seen is that people will maybe change their price, their image and their title when really they need to focus on one change at a time. Is that correct? Exactly, yeah. So you want to keep it simple. Uh, so do an A-B test, which means you're only, you only have two different versions of the product you're testing. And second of all, um, when you're doing that, make sure that you're, you're only testing one thing on your listing. Yeah. Um, so so the, the property, if you test your uh, title and your main image together, you're going to run the test. You're going to get an answer. But that answer is going to tell you that that main image title combination was better. Mm -hmm. That you, but the fact is, one of them could actually have been negative. Like it could have been worse. You won't, you won't know. You've, you've only tested the two of them together, and so then you're going to be forced to go and do another test between those two things afterwards to find your answer. So it's just complicating things. And you know, if you're if you're an advanced, you know, if you're an advanced user, you can start looking at a thing called multivariate testing. But otherwise, just uh, keep things simple as possible. Yeah. And um, yeah, then you can run one test after another. Yeah. So that's the way. And so before we get into quickly getting the software, if people are going to manually manage this, obviously it's cumbersome. So running the spreadsheet, yeah. you might be taking the history of your business report, look at your sessions, look at your conversions and look at what you're going to change. And then you're going to have to mark that all down in the spreadsheet. Um, which yeah. is said, I know from experience how cumbersome that can be. Um, so let's talk about your software. Let's, you know, um, let's talk about quickly splitly, what the advantages are. So instead of you having to put in the spreadsheets or pay a VA, what, what are some of the key things that you find that's use, useful for your users? Well, essentially, so if you're doing regular um, regular split tests, uh, the main advantage of using software is that it will. So as I said before, you if you want to make a change on a 24-hour basis, mm -hmm. that means you have to change it on uh, midnight Amazon time yeah. every day. Yeah. So depending on what time zone you're already sleeping in, that, that could be a little bit awkward, right? So um, Pacific time in the US, you have to be awake and yeah. make that change. Um, so that that right there um, alone is is quite useful. The other thing is it's gonna if you use software, you're not gonna make a mistake. It's gonna gather all the data for you. It's gonna say, say okay, this these sessions applied to this variant on this day. That's all done, and then it's gonna calculate statistical significance for you. The whole thing is automated basically. So um, yeah, it can save quite quite a few headaches. Um, in terms of my, uh, what I alluded to before, uh, with the pr the problem with the pricing A/B test. And one of the other things that we have um, is is a so as, as I said, Amazon is saying that for the last thirty days worth of sales, that's going to affect where we're going to rank you today, uh, with with you know, and it's a uh, what they call a rolling average. So if we do run a and price A/B test, we're not going to be able to have that factored in. So what, we, what we've come up with is a, a tool called Profit Week, and it essentially tries. So first of all, rather than you choosing the two different price points, it would test different price points near your the current calculated optimum price. And each day it's recalculating what it thinks your optimal price is. And what, how it's doing that is it's actually, it uses a thing, it's a technique from um, AI and machine learning. It's called a linear regression. And it's saying, okay, well, today today's price um, is affected by, today's sales are affected by today's price and yesterday's sales and therefore price points going all the way back for 30 days so let's so we're going to build a model of what that looks like and then each day we, we change the price again and we say okay now what do the model look like now what do the model look like and you can combine this all together and you can say okay we're, we think that this is what your price to profit relationship is so it's we can product a function of price versus profit and then what you do is you look for how to maximize that function 
And you say, okay, that's it. That's the most profitable price point. And we're going to move our price towards that. And then we, tomorrow, we're going to redo it all over again. Yeah. So it's constantly recalculating um, what the optimal so, price is. So the benefits there really is that you've got the automation, you calculation mm-hmm. for possible opportunity or lost opportunity, which is obviously mm-hmm. the algorithms doing that work for you all the time. And I take it that when people are setting these tests up, as because we're measuring one thing at a time, you might take three of your biggest sellers and just change the price on those, set them off, and you check on them in a couple of weeks' time rather than yeah. having to do this every day. So it saves on VA costs, and, and but basically your time, which is, as the business owner, is normally the most expensive time, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Also with ProfitBeak, I mean, I don't, I don't know of any other way you could reliably – um, actually factor in you're not going to like an A-B test you can do that manually it's yeah. possible it's just um, it's time consuming and fun stuff to do but with the pricing thing if you don't use the software technique that we're talking about I think the only other way you're going to be able to get uh, do your price is just intuition and yeah. it's just uh, change and hope for the best yeah so um and so, what, yeah. what, what in terms of percentages? Because every product's different, every price point's different. What you're seeing with your users? What kind of percentage savings are they make, or you know, improve, improve, improving profitability over the space of a year or so? Have you seen them? They've increased their sales by four percent or five percent. Well, it varies from product to product, but in, um, in some cases, quite a bit more than that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I gave the example before, I think, um, or I mean, there was another podcast we were talking about how we did this. So we, we, we actually work with Jungle Scout, yeah. uh, which is, I'm sure everyone's familiar with. And uh, so uh, Greg set up a test on his new product for the Million Dollar Case Study. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the Jungle Snugs. Yeah. Um, so this is a baby hooded bath towel. That was the product. And the test was simply um, main image, the product on its own, versus product with a baby. Yeah. Um, now, all the competitors are have products with babies in them as, as well. So the, so the thought process there, the hypothesis is, hey, well, maybe uh, maybe if we just have the towel on its own, that could be better because it looks different. Um, well, um, no, that, was, <laughs> that wasn't the case at all. The, the baby hooded, the baby with the towel was got uh, almost twice the number of sales. And so the, the the difference there was enormous, and um, so you can I mean if you if you keep on doing these tests and keep on um, optimizing, you can hit 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 like really interesting uh, results and really profitable returns. So it just um, but then again you don't you don't the whole thing about it is you don't know uh, when you start the test. Yeah. So there's no you know no guarantees. But I mean over time if you keep testing, if you just stick with it, you keep optimizing. And uh, you can get pretty, pretty good ROI. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I've been split testing since about 2009 or something. I've just mm. given up having an opinion because I was always wrong. So it's amazing because mm. obviously a lot of people, well, you know, you've got the Amazon Echo Chamber and say, people go, you should do this and you need five reviews before you turn on PBC. It's all out of bollocks at the end of the day. Ultimately, mm. it's about testing. Mm. And nine times yeah. out of ten, I'm wrong. I'll guess it mm. as fun, but I, I, I yeah. kind of get it wrong. It's like what you've just said there is that you've got a surprise. So I've now got to the stage I don't rely on opinion for anything. I just mm. test because I know it's going to be different yeah. from one thing to another. But Exactly, yeah. yeah. And also those opinions, those opinions that you're hearing, they may not be – that person may not be wrong. Yeah. But they're wrong in your case. That's right. So this, That's this, what I meant. So when I say it's bollocks, what I meant by yeah. it is that in your case, your product, it, you yeah. know, there might be like what I like about when people share that stuff and we share stuff on here. I call it a framework. Yeah. So mm. basically you need a framework to test from. Mm. So yeah. you might not work off the data that you've been provided as your end result for your product, but mm. listening to what other people's results are a good way to set up the foundations for your own tests to get your own results. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, well, look, it's been great having you on. We'll get you back later mm. on in the year also. How's the best way people can reach you? So you can just uh, message hello at speedy.com and um, you can also... The other thing is, if you do actually want to have a look at the software, and um, you can, it's very. We often schedule calls with our customers, so we'll actually do a half hour onboarding and go through everything and explain everything. Um, and also, yeah, we we have our Facebook and all that sort of stuff. But the easiest thing I would say is, if you want to find out more information, just go to the website, and uh, it's all there. And it's at splitly.com, yeah. Yeah. 